Through steps of gold and streams of silver, Ola hovered coast to coast, hurtling past lilac clouds and vanilla-scented dust motes. The flickering of well-worn pages whisked straight past her ears, and the sunny warmth of a tropical wind blew away all of her fears. Ola knew she would be safe somehow. This was the magic she'd always dreamt of. But after hovering for a moment or two, the girl started to wonder where she'd end up. Then suddenly, it all stopped. She didn't even feel herself falling. But somehow, she'd landed at the very top of a palm tree early on a Wednesday morning. The sun shone golden through the fronds, and in between branches far and beyond, Ola could spy sandy beaches and jewel ocean blue and breadfruit trees and plantain too. Ola knew there was one place that had all of these. I must be somewhere in the Caribbean seas. I knew reading that atlas was a good idea. It's coming really handy now that I'm here. Ola looked around, eyes open wide, fascinated with awe and wonder. She looked above, below, side to side, and finally looked under. <gasps> under! Under the palm were four spindly legs and four spindly arms, not befitting a snake or a rat or a tiger, but belonging, in fact, to a rather small spider. And there she heard, in the sunlight dawning, the sound of that tiny creature <sighs> yawning. And after a pause, without warning, he started to sing to himself. Ah, ah, Nancy, quacko Nancy, what shall we do today? Shall we hide in a hat and sneak some beans? Shall we weave a web to catch a dream? Shall we find a feast and dine by moonlight? Shall we buy all the stories from Father Sky? Before Ola could react in the morning so hazy, the spider stood up and turned into a lady who sang the same song, sang along. Ah, ah, Nancy, Aunt Nancy, what shall we do today? For my father says I am a no good trickster and that I should get wise. But how should me get any wisdom at all if he scattered it all over the skies? Before Ola could speak or even raise a hand, the spider woman did a spin and turned into a man who sang the same song, sang along. Ah, ah, Nancy, brother Nancy, me know what we should do today. For since Father Nyame, God of the sky, has given all the people on earth wisdom, I shall take a piece from each and every creature and seal it all in a big drum. Yes, sir, Nancy. Kweku, Nancy. Ha, what a clever idea. The best thing about it, the most funny thing, is that no one else will ever hear. Before Ola could speak or even wave high, the Spider-Man turned and looked up to the sky. Ah! The spider exclaimed, rather rattled and shaky, for he thought that he'd been completely alone. But instead, he looked up to find a giggling girl who <laughs> greeted him. Hi there, Nancy. Who are you and how do you know my name? <laughs> well, you sang it enough times, so... That is true, I did sing it. How much of that did you hear, child? <coughs> All of it. And how much of that did you see, child? All of it. <laughs> nice dancing, by the way. <laughs> Why, thank you. 
You know, I think I like you. Uh, sorry, didn't catch your name. Ola. My name's Ola. A pleasure to make your acquaintance, Ola. Let me introduce myself proper. My name is Kweku Anansi, child of the earth and sky. Spider, shapeshifter, trickster, and whatever else the situation calls for. Yeah, I think I'm just going to call you Anansi. Good decision. You are clever, like me. I thought you just said you weren't clever. After all, you did just tell me your entire plan to get wisdom. Listen, child. Wisdom and cleverness, they're not the same thing. You can have one without the other. And according to my parents, me not got no wisdom at all. <laughs> you know, my parents would say the same thing about me. I mean, they're always telling me, Ola, you're such a clever girl. But when I tell them about all these adventures I want to go on and all these places I want to see, they never take me seriously. Maybe if I could get some wisdom for myself, then people might actually listen to what I have to say. Hmm. What say you? We make a deal, Ola. The two shook hands with a smile, and after, the trickster rubbed his long chin and chortled with nervous laughter. <laughs> well, now you know my plan. I'd really appreciate it if you kept this between us. Then, if you help me out, we can split the wisdom, no fuss. Ola thought and thought some more, and found that she agreed. So Anansi helped Ola down from the tree. Then, in the blink of an eye, right behind her, Anansi transformed himself back into a spider. He sat himself upon the girl's shoulder and together they began to walk to town. But Ola's brows creased with a frown, for there was still one question on her mind. <laughs> well, what is wisdom exactly? What does it look like? And how hard exactly is it to find? She asked this to her eight-legged friend. Ah, that is a good question, for you see... Wisdom looks a lot like me. It is always shifting and changing forms. You can find it in the evening. You can find it in the morn. But the easiest way to find wisdom is to stop, look, learn, and listen. And let me tell you something. Where you can find others, there is bound to be something you can learn from each other. Oh, is that why we're going to find other people? Exactly said Nancy, and the first stop is my bug brothers. No sooner had he explained than up from the ground rose a rather impressive sandy mound of ants crawling to and fro and all around singing their working song. We work at night then, we work at day from morning through the sun. We pick a place where we like to play for when the day is done. Why? Hello there, Anansi, called out Sister Ant. Well, go on, Sister Ant, called out Anansi. Me and my friend Ola are looking for some good advice. Could you and your family help us out? Why, of course, said the ant, happy to help as she gave him a great big smile. If you want the key to working hard, you've got to work in style. And with that, snip snap, the whole chorus of ants started to sing their working song once more. We work at night then, work at day, from morning through the sun. We pick a place where we like to play for when the day is done. We work at night then, work at morning, we move from dawn till dusk. We love to march from the day we're born, if you're an ant, then you must. As all this was going on, Anansi picked up a large gourd from the earth, which is a fruit that looks a bit like a clay pot. Then he plucked a tuft of dry grass and with a whoosh and a whoop swept up the song from the first note to the last. 
Now we have collected something special, Anansi told Ola. That was a good bit of wisdom to know. I can tell, Ola said, rather impressed. That was a really cool show. Along the trail, the two kept walking until they came to a leafy burrow. There stood a hare, nibbling on lettuce and hopping along the hedgerow. Anansi grew tense. Last time I saw that fiend, he nearly tried to squish me. But if I transform myself right now, it'll make him act more sweetly. With that, the spider grew into a woman who gave Ola a wink. Then, with a swish of her long dress, she asked the hare for a drink. Ah, brother hare, what a wonderful home you have built for yourself here. But when I start to wonder about where I should live, I shed a tear. A hurricane came and blew our house away. And now me and my child have nowhere to go. But tell me, Brother Hare, what is the key to building yourself a strong and sturdy home? Well, 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 my dears, that secret is not so easy to tell. It's a family recipe passed down from hair to hair. But Brother Hare, my poor child and I are left freezing coal under the sky. Anansi pointed to Ola, bringing her into the lie. Oh, well, I can't deny two fine young women in need. That's bound to make me feel sorry, guaranteed. So to you, the secret I will tell. Dig, 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 and you will be well. And with that, Hare gave up his secret recipe to building the best burrow you'd ever see. Quick as a flash, out came the gourd where wisdom was kept, and into it the hare's knowledge was swept. <laughs> what a fantastic joke! Anansi laughed as they carried more wisdom away. You played your part so well, Ola! But... As Anansi danced along the way, Ola had started to think. It didn't seem right or fair or even very wise to get what you want by using tricks and lies. But before Ola could tell Anansi what she thought, the spider woman stopped just outside the jungle. We best be careful here. This is dangerous territory, full of hippos and monkeys, lion and tiger. But if I transform myself right now, then they won't come after us. I'll pretend to be a hunter. And so, with a flourish, the woman transformed into a man with khaki trousers and a deep brown tan. The two ventured on, but it was not long until they came across a five, ten, twenty foot python. The snake slept stretched out across the path, so Anansi and Ola tiptoed away slowly, and only once they were hidden behind a thick round tree, they began to whisper lowly. It is best we not wake her. She is not only fast, but sneaky and usually very hungry. Well, can't we just talk to her? Are you crazy? She could gobble both you and me up in a heartbeat. Certainly not. Well, we should just go another way into town then. This is the only path into town. Well, we can't just stay here. We should go back. Ola, we need to get into town because there's more people there. And more people means more wisdom. I think we've got enough wisdom. Look, you want your parents to listen to you, right? Well, yes. 
Ola thought and thought and thought some more until her brain was aching sore. If a Nancy won't even listen to my ideas now, then maybe I do still need more wisdom somehow. Look, she finally told him, I've got a plan that needs two. You go over there and shake that giant tree and I'll bang on this massive log like a drum. Then, when all that noise is made, Sister Snake might think it's a thunderstorm. Anansi nodded. Brilliant, Tyler. I knew bringing you along was a good idea. And so, the two took up their positions and on the count of one, two, three, boom, 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 Ola banged the drum and cha, 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 and Nancy shook the tree and a rat-a-tat-tat and a bomb, bomb, bomb went echoing across the jungle floor. Sister Python awoke with a start. What is that beating around my head and my heart? Such noise gives me a headache and makes my body quake. Then, on the next crash that sounded with might, the python slithered, her snakeskin quivered, and she shivered right out of that skin in fright. Ola felt bad. Had she done something wrong? After all, this is where the python belonged. She hadn't meant to scare her so badly, but as she watched the snake slink far away, she saw a certain spider dancing around madly. Hooray, hooray, this is the best date. I have been waiting for a week to get rid of that snake. More wisdom for me. I needed an accomplice to win. And now I can take her skill of shedding her layers of skin. Out came the gourd and sweep, sweep, the wisdom went in. And that is why spiders know how to shed their skin. As interesting a story as that is to know, our tale still has a while to go. Anansi, said Ola, getting rather suspicious. Anansi, you promised me that I could get some wisdom too, but so far I haven't even seen a drop of it. You're hiding it all in that gourd. Ah, Ola, now that I am wiser, I can tell you, you must be more patient. (laughs) After all, your fantastic plan means we can now get into town and gather more wisdom for you. Ola sighed. (sighs) She was so tired of waiting, and this adventure hadn't turned out nearly as fun as she thought it would. I wish I had enough wisdom to know if he was telling the truth or not. But (sighs) maybe things will get better once we're on the go, and I'll stop feeling so down. So off the two went into town and gather wisdom they did. The first stop was Sir Rat, who lost his vast junk collection, and Sister Sparrow became quite flighty when she misplaced her sense of direction. Little did they know, it had all been poured into the gourd. Watch out, watch out, and Nancy's about filling his endless pot of wisdom. Next up, the two stopped by the ocean shack where Shark and Whale were having a lark. Anansi and Dolla clipped off a little patience here and a little menace there, then vanished as though they'd come out of thin air. Watch out, watch out, Anansi's about filling her endless pot of wisdom. From Turtle, they took a talent to walk and swim. From Green Monkey, the limberness of his limbs. From Snail, a shell. From Bee, an entourage. From Gecko, the ability to camouflage. Watch out, watch out, and Nancy's about filling his endless pot of wisdom. Now Dolphin 
was a tough one. Intelligent was she, but our crafty pair scooped up her invisible language right out of the sea. Whilst passing, they tricked flying fish out of his tail and wings, and from Sister Pig, they snuck away with her appetite for all good things. Watch out, watch out, and Nancy's about filling her endless pot of wisdom. Rooster was left crowless, Peacock without his charm, Seal without her slippery skin, and Armadillo without his armour. Little did they know, it had all been poured into the gourd. Watch out, watch out, Anansi's about filling his endless pot of wisdom. <laughs> all was well, but after that, Anansi and Ola were chased through a cave of rather annoyed bats. It was about then that they made the decision that they really didn't need nocturnal vision. Watch out, watch out, Anansi's about filling her endless pot of wisdom. Each and every drop of wisdom, from the largest to the small, was hauled up from its source and trapped in the gourd, one and all. But, as Ola travelled, she found herself getting quite stressed, for each and every creature they took wisdom from was left in more and more of a mess. What's more, Anansi didn't seem very interested in sharing. And every time that Ola gave a reminder that maybe they should be a little bit kinder, he brushed her off without caring. Eventually, the exhausted Anansi and the frustrated Ola arrived back at the palm tree they'd set out from. But there was still one last thing to be done. After Anansi reached up and pulled the shine right out of the sun and stuffed it into the gourd, night fell early. Ah, oh, there! Now I have collected all the wisdom I can get. <laughs> well, don't you mean we? I mean, I did half the work. Yes, yes, of course, Allah. We, we have collected all the wisdom we can get. <laughs> now can I have some? Of course, child. But first, we have to put it up in this palm tree. I want to hide it so nobody else can find it. It was at this point that Ola had quite about enough of Anansi's antics. I can't believe you. You have used your tricks on nearly every creature on this island. Ah, just me? Just I? What happened to we? After all, you were right there spinning lies along with me. In fact, I think you can make a rather fantastic trickster. I could teach you. You could be my apprentice. If you help me get the wisdom up in the tree. No, I'm not going to help you anymore. You can't use your tricks on me. Why, Ella? Mitart, we were friends. We were at first. But the more of that wisdom you've gotten the more greedy you've become. You've gone from asking people's advice to stealing all their secrets. Oh, come on. I needed those secrets much more than they did. No, you didn't. Look, I don't want more wisdom if it means I have to hurt others to get it. Even I'm wise enough already to know that that's a bad idea. Fine then. You can stop there, and I will keep all the wisdom for myself. Then I'll hide it in this palm tree, so you can never find it. Oh, fine then, I don't want that wisdom anyway. <sighs> it's turned you into a selfish liar. I'm leaving. And with that, Ola marched down the beach through the cold evening air, with sadness in her heart and salty wind blowing through her hair. She sat on the sand, 
now pale and beige, and watched the tide set near. She thought about all her family and friends whose voices she wished she could hear. Ola wondered about all those times she had longed to get far away, but now she was all alone, and she had no clue how to get back home. So here, on this island, she had to stay. <sighs> Everything's gone wrong. All I wanted was to see if I could grow up a bit and maybe find out a bit more about me. <sighs> but if I sit here sulking, nothing's ever going to get done. So if I want to get through this, first I'll stand. Then I'll step, then I'll walk, then I'll run. And with that, Ola stood up slowly and walked towards the palm tree, finally ready to confront the surely all-wise Anansi. But what she found instead made her want to laugh. But there the spider had fallen down, face planted in the grass. <sighs> Why can't I lift this guard myself? Her eyeless wisdom is so heavy. If Allah were here, maybe she could help me. Me don't have enough hands free to climb and carry at the same time. So how am I supposed to make all of this wisdom mine? <laughs> and Nancy, that's easy, Ola shouted from the sand. Look, this is just like when my mum helps me with my rucksack, so let me give you a hand. If you take some palm leaves and tie up the gourd to your back, then you'll have all eight limbs free to climb along the track. And Nancy stopped, shocked that Ola would give him such good advice. Me thought that you hated me. After all, I wasn't being very pleasant. <laughs> Ola thought and thought some more. Yeah, that is true. I am still cross with you. And though you're not off the hook yet, someone once told me that it's wise to forgive and forget. The trickster paused and then he smiled an honest sad smile i have not been treated so kindly in a very long while i got so used to being tall that i was no good that i decided to cause mischief just because i could to stay alive just to survive i've had to rely on my wits and tricks a lot but you, Allah, you have taught me that maybe it is wise to sometimes share and not hoard what I have got. You shall take all the wisdom you want. Here, the gourd is yours. No, Anansi, I don't want all that wisdom. It's no good if I can't share it. Besides, it belongs to all the creatures on the island. Seems to me you already have a lot of wisdom of your own. So what am I supposed to do with this then? <laughs> well, I do have one more idea. Ola told her plan to Anansi, and the spider giggled with glee. So then Ola tied the gourd to Anansi's back, and together they climbed up the tree. Once they reached the very top, Ola pulled out the cork that was the stopper, and with a mighty heave, they emptied all the wisdom out onto the sea breeze. And that blessed wind took the knowledge all over the island, giving back what was once stolen. So as all the creatures slept in their beds, their learning slipped back into their heads and they were left peaceful and smiling 
For each and every creature had a piece of their own wisdom returned, plus something new they had received and learnt. All of a sudden, that same wind swept around Ola like a gentle tornado. It was then she knew it was time to go. I have to leave now, Anansi, child of the earth and sky. <laughs> I hope you can find your own wisdom and maybe give honesty a try. Anansi shrugged, but then Ola pulled him in for a hug. The spider softened and, with a tear in his eye, started to wish Ola a heartfelt goodbye. Child of wit and wisdom, Ola, it was a pleasure to meet you. If you ever need to find me, then just look for a silken web. There you'll find me spinning a story and sharing several too. That was the last Ola saw of Anansi and the Caribbean blue. Its reality stripped away like strands of silk to give way to something new. Lost in the pearly mists, Ola closed her eyes and held her breath. Would she end up back at home? or in another story time.